Out to the Unknown, 1965, The Yellow Peel, theme music plays, Woman over Intercom, Dr. Frame. May I come in for a moment, Dr. Frame? Door opens. John, are you right? Yes, I'm fine. I must have been dreaming. What is it? The Detective Inspector Slim, waiting to see you. You phoned several times. I told you you were well busy. But now he's coming round. Well, did he say what he wanted? Helen? No, except that it was important. Better see him then. You sure? I mean, you sure you're not too tired? No, Helen, don't fuss. I'll get rid of him quickly. Then we'll have, di- we'll have dinner. Hmm. Well, we'll talk about it later. I'll send him in. Come in, Inspector. Been trying to get... all. Oh, been trying to get... all oh, afternoon, Doctor. Frame. Well, I was a little tired. Been resting, so- Superintendent Barry. Thought you might be of some assistance to us. In what way? We've got a bloke down at the station. We're charging him with murder. Only snag is he don't, we don't know very much about him. Can't get any sense out of him at all. He's either off his head, psychology speaking, or he's the world's greatest actor. Superintendent thought you might help us decide which. You sound as if you really made your mind up, Inspector. Somebody commits a crime, it doesn't matter to me whether he's a nut or genius or both. I just apprehend him and charge him. Right, of course, nowadays, they're all nuts. But in my book, there are still thieves and murderers, just the same as they always were. I'm surprised you want my help, Slim. What I, what I want, Doctor, is a conviction frame. Yes, I'm not interested in that, Inspector. My soul injured is? Yes, sir, I understand. The soul interest is clinical. And the only opinion you may have may be available to the man's defence as well. That is quite right, sir. When would you like me to come down to the yard? It won't be necessary, sir. We can bring him here. Save you a bit of trouble, won't it? Yes. Oh, really? I'm... No, that's all right, sir. It's no trouble to us. We're bringing him this evening. Thank you, Dr. Frame. Oh, incidentally, this man is a murderer. Tied... Armed robbery, shot and killed three people. people. Is it safe to bring him here? Oh, he's dangerous. Well, you'll be right with us, Doctor. We look after you. Door opens, door closes. Anything serious, Frame? Somebody, somebody did charge you with murder. You want me to examine him? We're bringing him here this evening, Helen. Here, yeah, Frame? Yes. That's funny. It didn't, hasn't struck me. A little odd, isn't it? Bringing him here, me? Always. Anyway, it's rather puts pay to a dinner date, Helen. Yes, it does, Frame. Well, don't let, does it, don't let that upset you, Helen. Well, I actually, well, I hadn't actually accepted, Frame. But, well, it's Tuesday. We always have dinner on Tuesday, Helen. Yes, every Tuesday. Routine isn't the word, John. Frame, Helen. Wednesday, is that routine? Perhaps I want a little more than a Christine dinner once a week. Are asking me to make a decision, Helen? I'll leave it that up to you, John. Frame, and Wednesday, Helen? Perhaps we'd better get back to things as they used to be. Remember, you once asked me never to accept invitations to go out with you. That are. It was just a typical piece of masculine rationalisation. Paving the way for rejection. For you had a chance to reject me yourself. It's called preserving the ego. Helen, I'll please John, no. You stay on, on this evening? Yes, if you want me to. Faint, humming, low humming. John, what's the matter? It's that noise. I heard it earlier today. What noise? But surely you frame it's a kind of humming. Well, maybe it was It was a lift. Those lifts make strange sounds. The head over intercom. Dr. Frame? Bed's line is waiting, Doctor. Show him in, would you? Door opens. Good evening, Doctor. Good evening, Inspector Sline. Right, sit him down there. Chair scraping, the handcuffs clicking, frame. Has anyone looked at the cut, Sline? So any bruise, Doctor? Um, friend gets a little violent. Must we keep your handcuffs? It's better that way. Come on, you. Wake up, Inspector. Don't mind. I'd like to handle this this my way, Frame. What is your name, Sline? We're not very sure, Sline. You two sit either side of him. Please don't sit down, Frame. Do you hear me? Doesn't he call himself anything, Sline? Connor's the name he used, Frame. Connor. Can you hear me? Connor panting. Miss Connor, do you know where you are? Do you know who I am? Well, who am I? Connor, 
Don't you know, Frayne? Yes, I know, but you, do you? Connor, look, John, what happened? Why did you tie me up like this? You're not tied up, you're handcuffed. I'll tell you why in a minute. Who, well, how do you know my name is John? Oh, for peace sake, old boy, you're John. You're John, I mean, I did training with you. Share my quarters with. Don't you want me to call you John? I mean, do you want to be dressed as my rank? Very well, sir. Permission to speak, sir. May I say something about my present, our present position, Commander Leeson? Slim. Cut that out. Whatever your name is, Frame. Inspector, do you mind? Frame walks across the room. Frame picks up a chair. Frame. What is your that name you just called me? It's Connor. It's your name, Leeson. Shouldn't call, I call you that any more, Frame? Don't mind. Except my name is Frame. Don't you understand, Frame? Look, John Connor. All right. So your name's Frame. Frame. You believe your name is Connor, Connor. Correction. I know my name is Connor. That's a lot of nonsense, Frame. What do you know it means, Lane? Because your name is Wilfred Connor, born Hastings, Essex. I know the date he gives, October 7th, 1969. Is that correct, Mr. Connor? Connor, is that correct, Frame? Do you think you're born in 1969? I think my mother would confirm it, Frame. So... Do you know what the date date is, Connor? June 3rd or 4th? I'm not sure. A year? 1996, frame. Year is 1969. This is, this is, this is 1969. This is the year in which you claim you've been born. Connor, you really are gone, aren't you, old boy, frame? Look, Connor, if I show you a calendar or newspaper which clearly shows today's date is June 4th, 1969, will you believe me then? No, why not? Because his job we're doing is difficult enough, and sometimes every doubts his or her reason. Pressure's on all the time, so you have to cling certain unalterable things, like your name, the date, the name of friends. Now I know what year it is. Do you understand that? I know, Sloane. He was like this at the yard frame. If I persist in telling you that it's 969, what would you do from that? That you're sick, mad, Connor. I've said f- sick. To every madness, if you like, but we're trained to recognise the symptoms and to take precautions. Now come on and tie me. Let's try and talk the things out. Frame, you're not tied up. You're handcuffed. You're under arrest. Do you, do you participate that, Connor? Arrest? How can I be under arrest, Frame? According to the police, you shot and killed three people. That's attempting a robbery, Connor. John, you don't really believe that. Frame, I'm only telling you. Well, the police said, Connor, they weren't people, John. Don't you remember? They weren't people, Frame. What were they then, Connor? You know as well as I do, they're space creatures, Venusian space creatures. Frame, that's what you shot? Three space creatures from Venus. That's right, Frame. The police do- doctors do any pl- medical tests on this man's line? Quite a few. Why, why sir, Frame? This kind of association... We were compatible with drug taking, or possible severe alcoholism. Slime. Test didn't show anything like that. Frame. Told us you the same story with the rest of slime, yes. He said he killed three space creatures. Connor. What are they like, these space creatures, Connor? You saw them yourself, Slime. I know I've forgotten what they look like. Can you remember? I can remember, right, Frame. Tell me about them then. Them. Connor, of course. You really believe in them, did you? But I knew. Do you remember, John? We had a row about, row about it. I said something about it. About these being wild wildlife all over Earth and the sea of one night space. Oh no, he said, not quite impossible. How could we be so sure? That's what you got, what got me. Why shouldn't we be, be some kind of creature? Scientists haven't dreamed about it. About why? Well, we know now, don't we? I never nearly screwed up when I saw them. Not with fright, well, not with just fright, just with the way they looked. What did they look like? Like lizards when they actually see them, almost transparent. Outside we couldn't, we couldn't see them, see them. And suddenly, when they were in the ship, we saw them form, forming before us. Seems it looks, takes them a second or two to adapt. I grabbed the electron gun, sprayed them twice. I heaved them into the airlock vault, jettisoned them in space again, frame. 
That's what happened to you, Connor. Don't you remember? You saw them yourself. They're sitting just over there at the control panel frame. You think we're still in a spaceship, Connor? We are, John. We are. Look out at the port. Tell me what you see. Space. Earth. A pinpoint in the distance. Go on, look. Frames at step, footsteps. Frame. This is the port, Connor? Of course it is, Connor. Look out, footsteps. Now tell me what you see in a star, star sky, stars. Down the street, a few people, cars. The bus stop just going by. Can't see where it's going, though. We don't have buses anymore, John. You remember in the past, double decker buses. Pretty tangible thing. Not an ob- object to weave a fancy round, Connor. But that's just what you're doing, Frame. How many of us are in this spaceship? How many of us are in this spaceship of yours, Connor? Just the two of us. You should know that. What well, about Spectre Frame? Detective Spectre Frame. The man who brought you here. Two sisters. Is no one else here? Just you and me, Frame. You've been talking to them, Connor. Correction, John. Been talking to them, not me. Yes, you're right. I've been talking to them. But you must be able to see them, Spectre. Would you mind standing in front of Connor? Just for a moment, Frame. The inspector standing directly in front of you, screwing me from your view. Can you see him now? No. Frame. You're quite certain, Connor? Positive line. You don't believe in all this ball, do you? You can't see me, right? Flynn, Slim slaps Connor. Frame. Inspector line. Ask him if he felt that frame. I must con- insist I conduct the interview in my own way. I strongly disapprove of violence being used, line. All right. Just ask him if he felt it. Connor? Do you feel anything just now, Connor? What do you mean, Frame? Expect the sign to struck you with his hand across the cheek. Do you feel anything? No one struck me, Frame. Do you still believe he's acting his line? He saw me right. He was arrested. We arrested him. He drew a gun on us. He was going to shoot. Fragment of his imagination. Frame, I wish I had your confidence, Inspector. Your certainty. Because as I am, as far as I'm concerned, this man is telling the truth. He's the truth as he sees it. You think he's completely balmy? The moment he's deranged, he's suffering from hallucination, fascination, fancy. When is he going to snap out of it, Frame? No, maybe never, Sline. Look, Doctor, I want a statement. I need a statement. Can't you get him and talk sense in for a few minutes? Can always. He can't always be like this. Maybe well, he can try. But the moment he rejects all reality, well, I'm hoping to establish some common ground with him, some knowledge we can both share. Like, well, let's try. Frame, Connor, I'm going to play a little game. I'm going to try and get back to reality, Connor. Reality yours, Frame. Ours. Now, if I mention the date, say 10, 10, 10, 10, 6, what does that mean to you? Battle Hastings, Norman Conquest, Connor. What does it mean to you, Frame? Exactly the same, Connor. Good. I'm making progress, Frame. Thank you. I was about to say the same thing, Frame. Now, I'm holding something in my hand. What is it, Connor? A book. Frame, good. And this, Connor, pen, Frame, correct. Pain, frame. I put the pen down. What do I put on it? What did I put it on? A chart table. Do you think this is a chart table, Connor? Well, what do you think it is, frame? It's a desk. It's a fairly ordinary desk. There's a blotter in it. Telephone in the com. Reception room, frame. A few papers, letter, dot, Connor. A chart table, letter, table. It made of plastic, light metal. In front of you, or I navigate all ma- maps and operational orders. I left his radio. Well, why didn't you call base? Switch the radio on, call base. If I switch this on, I get through to my receptionist. You saw her as you came in. I didn't. Come now, Connor. You can hardly miss her. She's a very attractive young woman. Her name, Helen. How do you know that? So Helen's on board, Helen Carter. How do you know her name? You must have heard me speak to her, to her when you came in, Connor. You didn't speak to her, Frame. Then how did you know? How? She lives in the park, doesn't she? I remember that music with for the bandstand frame. Well, it's a matter of fact, Connor. Don't you remember? I drove you there once in my car. You kept talking about your life. Wife wondering if you're doing the right thing. Then you, you were going to give her up. Don't you remember? You talked about it so many times. Try to remember she's real. Your thing in this dream world of yours. Does that prove something? I know about Helen and Carol. I know about Carol too? Who's Carol? Well, your wife, for Pete's sake. Carol's my your wife. Well, no, you're quite wrong. 
That's what your wife's name. That's your wife's name. What's my wife's name, Frame? It's a uh, struggle, hesitates. You don't know. You don't know, tape player clicking frame. Better, I don't see much point in continuing this line. Right, Doctor. I'm taking away. Managed to get anything? Oh, yes, quite definite progress. This case interests me. Connor's a strong personality. I think we might see a great improvement tomorrow's line. In the morning, frame? Yes, in the morning we'll be fine. Good night, Spectre Flying. Good night, Doctor. Pause whiskey, Helen. All finished, frame? Oh, yes, Helen. John, what's the matter? Nothing. Nothing, Helen. Seems to upset in frame. A madman comes to my office, a stark raving madman. Do you know what he tells me? He tells me your name and address. How on earth did he know, frame? You never saw him before, Helen? No, never, frame. How did he know? You know that man intrigued me. He treated me, treated and frightened me. He actually frightened me for a moment. Did he seem to recognise you when you came in? No, don't even think he saw me, frame sighs. No dinner, Helen? Let's have a drink, shall we, Helen? Oh, your wife, Frank, wants you to bring her. You better do it. My wife? Don't you want her to know you were in the office, Frank? What did you say, Helen? Nothing much. I said you were busy. I said, well, tell her Car- him Carol rang. Her name's Carol? Carol. Call her voice or called her. Don't you, doesn't that prove something? I know about Helen and Carol. I know about Carol too, Frank. Who's Carol? Well, your wife, for Pete's sake, Carol, your wife. Well, not... No, you're quite John. You were here earlier. Yes, I wanted to listen to that tape again. You're worried about it. I'm intrigued. I'm surprised with a complete stranger, Helen. Are you sure you never met him before, Helen? It's positive frame. Then how? How, Slim? I wonder if Inspector Slim said anything to do with it. Why should he? Don't know why, but Slim's a very odd character. Don't know what I... That I, I don't know. That I, I like him much. Don't even know what. I don't believe him. He says he's a detective. Why should I believe him, Helen? But John, that's well. It's absurd. Man said he was a detective. Frame. That proves he does it. Well, that proves it is, doesn't it? I had people coming in here saying they're Napoleon. Anybody? Now, why is he not a detective, Helen? He showed you his warrant card, did he? Didn't show it to me, Helen. Don't suppose he thought it was necessary, Frame. Of course not. I mean, the doctor. Yet he did it necessary. Find it necessary to show it to you. And how do you know you really saw it? You seem to figure this thing in the most remarkable way. You seem to figure this thing in the most remarkable way. Quando mentions your name, tells me where you live, how you vouch, and now you vouch a slain. Just what is it in your interest in all this, Helen? What is it? I don't suppose I have to tell you you've got in yours a telephone number. Tell the telephone. Sorry, Helen, I'm sorry. I was so on edge about all this. Well, perhaps this will clear it up. So, Ben Barry, please, to Helen. What do you think you tell me? The sign didn't exist. Back to Barry. Oh, good morning, Tom. This is John Frame here. Very well, thank you. Tom, about this perspective line, man, you sent him... You sent with him. Frame, yes? Yes, I see. No, no trouble, not at all. Oh, yes, I think we'll get somewhere. Are you too pleased to help? Yes, of course. Thank you, Tom. Goodbye. Pots receive downsides. Sam, it appears. Last curse officer. Better Barry, sorry. Did give me some warning. You thought you might be less of a position to send a prisoner to see me than have me go to the yard. That doesn't help us, does it? No. That's kind of well. Is there such a thing as a perfect fault, Helen? Well, it's possible, Frame. Not to that extent. I mean, a certain amount of topography exists. It's usually in a prim- primitive level. Colin was too precise. He was too thoroughly sure of himself. Another thing about him is confidence. The one of Stim gets annoyed with him. For he can't bear a man with a mind of his own. He uses money to range. Look, maybe Stim is right. Perhaps Connie's kind of perfectly normal and acting apart. Frame still doesn't blame it, Helen. But John, the same man is really a really calculating man. Couldn't he have made cries, found about, uh, out about us? Just try and confuse you. But how and when? I mean, what per- we purposes uh, Connie knew, knew he was going to be caught, and also he knew be called to examine him. Can't believe he's shaming. 
Then, like, well, I can. Good morning, Doctor. Door is open, Frame. Good mo- morning, Inspector. Line. Shall I bring him in? Frame. Yes, all right, Frame. Have you noticed any change in him? Line. You think he's mad, don't you? I mean, clean off his rocker frame. Well, that might be a little bit of literate, literate interpretation of a, of a layman's line. Right, Doctor. Have a look at that. Opens paper document frame. Well, it's lying. You know what it is, frame? Confession, I assume. Lying. Might be a legitimate interpretation for layman, yes. Being the police, on the other hand, is that a somewhat different matter? This is what we refer to as statement by the accused. We're endeavouring to get our friend here to sign his statement. Now, if he's really mad, he'll sign it. Shouldn't he, frame? I think you're confusing a little things a little spectre. If he did, were to sign it, he would prove he's a stupid, not mad. Sign. What do you mean, frame? You mean that stupidity, dumbness, even in their streets are free. Not necessarily the same thing as madness. His man, Connor, is reasonably intelligent. He's probably above the average. He didn't doesn't believe he committed the crimes that are men- mentioned. So obviously he's not going to sign this statement, as you call it, Sline. I don't think you quite understand what I'm getting at, Frame. No, I don't think I do. Sline. Well, if he's not mad enough to sign anything, he knows well that he signed something that he knows was signing letting him in trouble. To my way of thinking, that proves he's saying, Frame, it does, Sline. Frame, definitely, Frame. My dear inspector, what would you sign this document? Sline, of course I wouldn't. Frame, why not? Sline, I saw I haven't committed the crimes listed. Frame, and surely you can understand that Connor refuses to sign for frame reason. Doesn't he? Doesn't believe he committed the crimes there are mentioned. Sline, because he's putting on his insanity caper. He's all right. When he left here last night, I quite. He had a quite reasonable track of him. Frame. He caught quite irrationally, Sline. Oh, yes, yes. Not about the case, mind you. He shouted quickly when we got around to that. The rest of the time is fairly normal, Frame. Good. Then we can get some results. We did get some results yesterday, Sline. Doctor, the only result I'm interested in today's statement is this. Frame, I'm afraid. That's your concern, Inspector. I haven't been retained for pro- by prosecution, Frame. Connor, come along now. Wake up. Wake up, there's a good chap, Connor. How are you feeling, Frame? I am very well. How about you, Connor? I thought for a moment you might have a recovered, Frame. Fair enough, I was entertaining a similar hope about you. Are you going to untie me now, Frame? Untie, Connor? I forgot, I'm handcuffed. Well, are you doing, going to take off the handcuffs off? I'm afraid there's nothing to do with me. But I'm pleased to hear you agree. You're wearing handcuffs. Look, John, if it makes you feel any hamper, I'll wear a ball and chain. If you like, Frame. And you agree? You're in my consulting room and not a spaceship, Connor. Is that what you want? If that's what you want. I'm in your consulting room. Do you remember killing people? Yes. If it makes you feel any better, happy in just a minute. What, ha- what happens to me if I admit killing three people? I imagine you go to trial, Connor. Be found guilty at Frame. If there's enough evidence, Connor. And then what, Frame? Then you'll be sentenced, Connor. Sentenced to what, Frame? Well, whatever the judge decides, I know a deal, Connor. Not, mu- not much that you haven't. I'd be, be sentenced to death. Now, next you wake up f- thinking that you're public. Hey, man, you want to carry out the sentence? Well, take back everything I said. I'm not going to do that. I'm that. Not in your consulting room. I'm a spacecraft. P for Piper. I'm 137485 Flight Lieutenant. Connor Wilfred, number three, Space Squadron, Royal Air Force. The year is 1996. I know where I am, what I am, and where I am. This is my lifeline. You can't destroy it, John. You can't destroy it. Now calm down, Connor. I'm not going to harm you. I'm not a policeman, I'm a doctor. You're ill and I want to help you make yourself well again. Now, yesterday, I thought we made, we got along fine, made real progress. Don't you mind, find our talk yesterday an interesting fatally? Yes, fascinating, Frame. We agreed on certain things, remember, Connor? I remember, Frame. Well, now today, I want to continue a little game. Oh, it won't work. Well, let's give it, give it a try. No, I was trying to humour you yesterday. But you must be wrong. That must be the wrong approach. Today, I'm sick to things as they are. Slime, you will see, Frame. 
You will see what, Inspector Sline. The moment the pressure goes, he starts acting mad again, praying. Connor, don't go to sleep again. You must be very tired. Did you have a good sleep last night? Of course I did. How could I? I was pacing. I was. Could I was pacing up and down half the time? I frame me, Connor. Yes, you. We well, weren't prowling round, muttering asleep. The state you were in. I don't dare go to sleep. I assure you, spent a very comfortable night at home, Connor. With your wife, frame. Yes, with my wife, Connor. I surprised you, didn't it? I mean yesterday when I talked to you about your wife and Helen. I shot you, didn't it, Frame? Shock is another sh- a strong, rather strong word, Connor. It was shocked, all right. For a moment, I thought I'd really got through to you. But I admit, for a moment, it was, let's say, surprise, good. I mean, you might even gr- grant I know more about you than you do about me. I wouldn't say that, Connor. No, well, do you know my wife's name? Ah, oh, I don't, Connor. Well, there, there you are, then. Now listen carefully. You seem a bit better today, much calmer. I think if you just take a pill, you might be all, all right. What kind of pill did you have in mind? A yellow pill. There's a bottle of them in the second drawer of the chart table. Oh, we're back at the, that, on that now, are we? All right, all right. The second drawer of your desk. The bottle's in there. Take one. Do you understand? What are they called, these pills? Everyone calls them yellow. Or Formula 40, 73. Does that mean anything to you? Yes, of course it does. It proved very successful in treating certain kinds of mental illness. What do you know about them? I know. That's all that matters. Have you ever had one of those pills, Connor? No, never never needed one, Frame. Better I take it. You checked the mental all the mental hospitals line. Been no escapes, if that's what you mean, Frame. No staff reporting missing or anything, Slide. Not to my knowledge. What's all about this yellow pill? It's very funny actually. If our friend was were here was right. If, in fact, we are living in time with long journeys with space were possible. Or well, top readers of hallucinations brought about by prolonged spells of weightlessness would be a hazardous, would be obvious hazard. Kind of spaceless area. The appeal we mentioned, Formula 73, something very likely, would be precisely the kind of antidote to use. He couldn't be doc- he couldn't be a doctor, could he, Frank? Why don't you ask him? Hey, Connor, why do you call yourself? Are you a doctor, Connor? I'm talking to you, Frame. Why don't you answer Inspector Connor? What, Frame? But to just ask you a question. Why didn't you answer him, Connor? Because I can't see him. I can't hear him. Do say that you didn't. That you didn't exist, except in your mind. Your name's Slyne, isn't it, Frame? You think he's there, not there? How do you know that, Connor? He told me. You told me yesterday. A bit pompous, didn't he? That's the one reassuring thing. This fancy world of yours, John. All the people. In it are real people. So you call Slime, for instance. You remember Warrant Officer Slime, King of Space Age Square Bashers? Used to take us to the drill. Remember you saying at the time, had every stand of attention, state of weightlessness, not a bad fault. I was lying as a police officer, kind of member of Slime. Ever in the offender, when I observed him committing the above offence, being laughing Slime, that's not so funny frame. Sorry, Spectre. I could only hear you saying, I could actually hear you saying that yourself. I can't remember, but something else tells you, tells you I'm right, doesn't it? You remember saying now, don't you, Fagin Crackles? I'm sorry, Connor. Fame, I met Slime for the first time yesterday, Connor. Take one of the pills and see if they still, you can still say that, Fame, Connor. Last time, there are no dinner tools in this room. Connor, look in the drawer, look in the drawer. Look at the door, go on, frame. If you don't look in the drawer, you're certified, you're certified, Connor. Go look in it, frame. Very well, grattling. Connor, told you they were, they were, there they were. Told you they, they were there. Frame, there must be some. Now take one, one, just one. Everything will change. You're back, back to normal in a matter of minutes, frame. I didn't put those pills in that drawer, frame, Connor. Doesn't matter who put them in the chair. But they are there, are they there, are, are they? That's indisputable. Just so take one, go on, take one. Frame stones out of the room, Helen. What's the matter, Frame? Seen these before, Helen? No, Frame. Didn't put them in my desk, Helen. Because, of course I didn't, Frame. And how did they get in there, Frame? How on earth should I know, Frame? Now listen, Helen, this is serious. Because it's just for me to look in the desk. You knew those pills 
were going to be in there. Now there's only one person who could have put them in there, apart from myself, Helen. And that's me, Frame. Yes, well, who? Who else could it have been? And just why would I want something? Or just why would I want to do something like that? You could have your reasons, such as, well, they're saying that they should acting rather strange today. Are you acting strange? Oh, yes. All this business about not wanting to go out for dinner with me, about wanting something more than castine dinners. You did say that, didn't you? I think I'd better go home. Helen, Helen, I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm saying half the time. I mean, it could begin to make me doubt my own sanity. Do you think that could happen? Could a maniac drive a perfectly sane man right off his head? No, of course he couldn't, Frame. Oh, no, no, you're wrong, Helen. You're wrong, say. Say you went in the house, all alone. Suddenly, someone appears. Now, whatever it is, he didn't threaten you or frighten you. Yeah, he just says he didn't exist. Tells you an hallucination. Reality, only in your own mind. Then he disappears, and the next day, what do you think? What do you believe? No evidence either against that person's existence. You wouldn't know what to believe. In his room, real? Is that there? Is there really a maniac next door? Are you, Helen? Do you really exist? Frame voice echoing. Are you really there, Helen? Are you really there, Helen? Now, are you feeling a lot? How are you feeling now, Frame? I'm better, thanks. That was stupid of me. I'm sorry. Helen, look, you're still, we're still waiting. Shall I tell him to go, Frame? No, of course not. You think it, don't you think it would be wiser? Frame, no, Helen. John, what is it? Just waiting. What would happen if I took one? What would, what would, what would vanish? What would remain? Nothing would change, and you know it, Frame. Do I, Helen? John, please don't. Oh, why are you fighting, Helen? I don't know. What happens if a perfectly normal person takes one, Frame? Find out. Because headache, it doesn't work. It can't work. See, a certain extent, we all live in a world of symbols, illusions. Illusion, imagination, if like. Now, if in the schizophrenic, this imagination is heightened, it's uncontrolled, the put of fantasy. The appeal to press is the power of imagination. So the schizophrenic takes one, he comes back to the real world. But if a normal patient takes one, he finds himself looking at life as it really is, the essence of things, for the first, very first time. Faith becomes a screw and a pattern. You can scarcely bear to hear people talk, because they realise most of the time they're not saying anything. I took one once a couple of years ago, an experiment. I couldn't work for a week. We enjoy our illusions, you see. Simple man and simplicity man. Take away his illusions, take away most of his life, Helen. Do you see? Do I see Connor again, Frame? So you're worried now, Helen. Just want you to take, don't, don't want you to take one of those pills, Frame. Or cooks, you don't. Because you're, you're just a symbol. My wife, I crawl. Helen, because the embodiment of everything that tolerate and understanding, tolerate and stand a glamorous intelligence. A man is a Helen in his dream world. Every Helen wants to preserve the man's image of herself. Helen, I think you're beginning, begin, being insulting. Frame, how can I insult something that, don't, that doesn't exist? If I take one of these, I won't even see you. You're just a symbol of fancy. You don't exist, Helen. You don't exist, Helen. Walk away, walks away, door slams. Did you take the pill, John? Frame, if you don't mind, I prefer you dress me a doctor, Connor. All right. You take the pill, Connor. Doctor, certainly not. But if it might be an idea to give you one. No, I don't need one. We'll be renting our atmosphere quite soon now. One of us has got to be fully fit to handle the ship. If you pers- if you persist in this kind of talk, Connor, I have no option to give you the pill. No, honestly, I don't need one. Frame. You still think you're on a spaceship, Connor? That's right. I thought you were coming round to my way of thinking. Frame. Did you? Well, you listen to me, Connor. You think you're really being very smart, don't you? You think you're confusing a lot of people, but not me. I, I know, I know. You understand, I know. The inspector was perfectly right. You're bluffing. But is it a pill? It's going to call your bluff, Connor. What do you mean, Frame? Take it, Connor. No. Frame, you're frightened, aren't you? Take it, Connor. You can't force me to, Frame. Don't need you to, do I? Don't need to, do, I don't need to. You're frightened. That's your first real mission. Because this little pill could explode your dream world. It's not a dream, I'm in a spaceship. 
by my mind voice is shouting. Desk, chair, detective, office. Now don't mess me about any more, Connor. You annoyed me. You tried to fool me. I can write anything I like in my port. You understand that? I can write enough to hang you. So come on, Connor, the truth, Connor. I keep telling you, Frame, the truth, Connor. Stop it, you're confusing me. I don't didn't sleep very much. You can sleep all you want when you were finished. Climb on, Connor. Think. Remember, perhaps you didn't mean it. We all understand it, Connor. Lot that I'm tired. You're sure? So you're so sure, Frame? Of course I am. You keep giving yourself away. Just now, do you know what you call me? You call me a doctor. Now, I didn't ask you to. You just said it. But how could I have done all those things? Murder? I'm not a violent man. Of course you're not. Not now. That's not... But it's all in all of us, Connor. A moment when we can't argue anymore. But the only way we can make a point is with our fist or a gun. Be reasonable, Connor. If it happens to all of us individually, collectively, war. Isn't that the kind of madness we disclaim responsibility for? You're only neat, Connor. You wage your own private war for half an hour. It's over now. Best thing to do is tell us me about it. I'm not saying you mean I couldn't have killed anyone. Softly. Isn't what I did? Frame three people, Connor. Connor. Don't remember. Do you suppose it was blackout or something like that? Of course it was, Connor. Can't explain it, Frame. Do you know where you are now? Well, in your office, aren't I? Isn't it, Doctor? That's right. You're not a spacecraft ship anymore, spaceship. Is that what I said? It's funny, I can remember telling you something about a spaceship frame. You said you did, did kill three people. Just freeze. Space creatures, Connor. Space creatures? Well, there were space creatures. Well, that's what you said. Space creatures, that's ridiculous. Space creatures last and controllably. Connor, Connor, Sam's laughter. Rather you a violent man. Must be rather a violent man, wouldn't you say so, Doctor? I mean, are you a bit frightened? Being having a murder in your consulting room? No. I might try to attack you, Frame. Don't think you wouldn't do that. Don't wouldn't do that, Connor. No, well, what do you think I should do then, Frame? I think the best thing you would be for you to think, make a full statement to Inspector, to tell him what happened here, how you felt. Connor, wouldn't it be better if I just pretend to be mad, Frame? You are, Connor. So it goes on saying it. You think I'm mad, don't you, Frame? I told you before, you are ill. Had a mental break, Madame. As, trial, as your trial defence will plead as a sanity. You don't won't go to prison. But that's what you're worried about. So I'll be get locked up with a stinking nuthouse full of blokes who think you're near Napoleon. Well, it doesn't work, Doctor. They're killed, and I'll kill again. I won't be locked up. Don't doesn't that frighten you? They are free policemen here, Connor. They can handle you. You're handcuffed. Quite securely. Ah, security, security, he said. What about now? About what about do, that, Doctor? Not so safe now, are you, Frame? Very being very stupid, Connor. Connor, uh, scared or just the same? Don't need a kill gun to kill people, Frame. Right, Connor, let them let let them let go. It only what only make things worse, still, Connor. Frame, better give me a hand, will you? Will you two g- help me? Can't you seize the attacking me, Connor? See, you're not safe after all. You're not so safe, are you? Not so safe at all. You're not so safe struggling, grasping. Connor choking, choking, grasping. Frame. Connor, Connor, Connor. No, I don't mean, don't mean to, Spectre. You saw what was happening. Why didn't you help me? I didn't mean, Spectre. Were you two? Were you two? Why did you just stand there? You saw what was he was trying to do. See him answer me, sobbing. Why didn't you say something? Oh, I see. Sobbing. You're all in it, in it on me, in it on me, in it. On me, all four of you should have guessed that. It was me you really after all the time. It was me. You didn't know what that, Connor. You didn't know that, Connor. Sobbing continues back to Helen. Help me, Helen. Where are you? Help me, Helen. Where are you? Will you come in, please? Faint whirring. Man of radio. Venus 347. P for Piper. Receiving on us a signal. The due to re enter atmosphere. One hour's time. P, P for Piper. Hello, hello, base. P for Piper answering. P for Piper answering. Receiving a message. Man of radio. radio. What's been happening up there? Been calling you for five hours. Wait, hello, base. We had a bit of trouble. Base? What kind of trouble? Attacked by space creatures. 
Can't rem- don't remember very clearly, but Connie went berserk. He tried to attack me. It was an accident, you understand, but base. What happened then? Connie's dead, base. That's hard luck, old man. You all right? Yes, I'm fine. Went mad, you said, something like that. You must have passed out. I don't remember much. Didn't he take his yellow pill? What? I asked Connor if he took his yellow pill. No, he wouldn't take one. I tried to get him to, too, but he wouldn't. That must have been the trouble. Yes, it must have been. Bad show. Nice bloke, young Connor. Yes, he was. Nice bloke. 